Hello all, hope you're well, hope you're having a great evening, great weekend, and welcome to our first video of 2023. The first video of 2023, I want to kick it off by covering a full breakdown on last week's price action, that being the currencies we we're looking at, areas of interest, the targets, and overall the strategy we utilize in order to get precise biases, precise um, entries and exits, um, and ultimately what led us to end the week in a profitable manner and i think we only traded actively two to three days um, so again that was a beautiful return and i want you to bear in mind within those two to three days it was only one session that we were specifically looking for trades in which was the new york session so when you put in perspective new york session being three hours three times three we we're only looking at price nine hours we were able to get such a substantial return within our specific areas of interest biases currencies um and I saw some phenomenal success stories, people up 20% within my Forex funds, um, and that's their actual live account, people up 1.3% on FTMOs, people passing, um, I had one person pass the funded trader. Um, so head over to our Instagram to see those several success stories, again, all valid by um, legit people with legit um, accounts, again, no demo flexing and all of that. Those days are sort of over where you can't actually fake the game. It has to be live proof on exactly the executions you've took. Um, and obviously the withdrawal shown via your dashboard. Um, so yeah, if you are profitable within any of the uh, Quantispone Capital public course, do share your success story with me, as again, it motivates me by 100, and it also inspires other traders out there that, you know, looking at price from an algorithmic standpoint can be put into a substantial career once funded um, and have the opportunity to trade with mass capital from these prop firms. Um, but with that being said, just going to go over price section that was called within our public telegram. So if you're not part of the public telegram, do go and check it out. The link will be in our bio. Everything is for free currently. And we're just going to be calling price action left, right, center, mostly pound dollar, euro dollar. We're obviously going to be looking at the dollar index. Commodity wise, not really focused on gold too much, but I will try and throw in some gold calls here and there. Oil, um, we're going to probably be doing about three, four times a week given analysis on and I will start throwing in some US 500 calls as I've got a little bit of um, a couple of people talking about indices um, and the whole narrative around that so I will try and analyze that as and when the New York Stock Exchange opens and time and price meet but yeah now let's actually look on to the charts and what we were looking at last week again I have the annotations printed before so there is no cheating um, in regards to me calling price, etc., And again, this is me doing a breakdown from a weekly perspective, but I actually want to get these breakdown calls out on a daily perspective. So as soon as price commences, you see the before, you see the after, and then the video format, you see the explanation. So not only do you get a visual format, um, you also get an audio format where I actually explain why I was looking at those specific um, areas of interest. I'm just going to cancel trading view. We don't actually get disturbed. So in trading view, um, telegram. So we don't get disturbed by any notifications as I've already put these screenshots above here. Um, so again, all proof or called beforehand, no hindsight in regards to calling price action. So we had this uh, annotation, this bias given on Tuesday, I believe it was. This is when I actually came back on Telegram because I saw this beautiful opportunity. And this is what we call the typical ICT day trading template in the sense that Asian range and the London session ideally gives us the weekly profile for the whole week. So I sort of had the framework in mind. Tuesday was going to frame the high of the week. And the reason I had that framework in mind is simply because of the Asian range. If I actually put on the Asian range right now, I'm just going to remove these indicators here. But the indicator I'm using is the session indicator by Lux Algo. Highly recommend it as it annotates the specific sessions you're looking at. So again, we have Tokyo, aka uh, London, uh, sorry, Asia session. We have the London session over here and New York session. And obviously these are um, corresponding to the Pacific kill zones. Nevertheless, Asian range over here, total soup of the Asian range. We swept soft side liquidity via this engine swing low here, traded into that first standard deviation. Again, this could be a London long, um, but I don't really like trading the manipulation of price, even though this would have been a very nice uh, move to cap capitalize on. I'm more of a one shot, one kill trader in the sense that I like to capitalize on the weekly range. But once you understand where the weekly range is most likely to trade, you can start scalping within that specific weekly, weekly range. So if I've capitalized on near enough the high of the week, I have the opportunity 
for example, if the high of the week is set on Tuesday, have the opportunity on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to ideally capture uh, favorable positions within that specific weekly range span. Um, so yeah, if I'm able to capitalize, let's say a 7% return on this specific one shot, one kill scenario, within Wednesday, I'm able to capitalize on an additional, let's say 5%, um, Thursday, I'm additional, let's just say 3%, and Friday, let's just say it was a losing day, you can see the ROI sort of add up quite um, tremendously at the end of the week. So yeah, that's how I basically look at trading in the grand scheme of things. The whole thing I'm trying to identify from Monday going into Friday is the weekly bias. What is the weekly bias? As soon as I've got that in mind, as soon as I've got framework where the weekly high and weekly low is most likely going to be, and again, there's several statistics that back up uh, certain days becoming a uh, certain high of the week, uh, certain days becoming certain low of the week, etc. And obviously with the mapping PDRAs and liquidity pools, it becomes that much more favorable. But yeah, with those statistics, it gives you that sentiment of confidence that, okay, the high of the week has been framed and I can start looking for this template to frame out. So that was the initial bias um, or the initial framework I was going with. Going on to a 15 minute time frame now, I saw this beautiful AMD schematic uh, commence. So we have the cumulative range before news event commence. Um, and yeah, this was, PMI, um, high impact news event. We saw higher pricing. You can see the aggression within this bullish candle over here. Took out all of these relative equal highs here. So again, early short sellers uh, got stopped out aggressively. And upon that liquidation come to fruition, we trade into that fourth standard deviation of the Asian range here. Liquidated that previous day's New York high. Um, and yeah, we traded into this. Let's see what the time frame that order block was in. So we traded into this one hour bearish order block. Last up candle price had an aggressive move lower that swept all of this sell side liquidity here and ideally created a new structural low. And then we saw uh, lower high, etc. form that engine of Sunkai here. So if I'm looking at this in the grand scheme of things, just going to remove the annotations. This was our internal range liquidity. Why was this our internal range liquidity? Again, if we're looking at this from a dealing range perspective, we swept this engine of Sunkai here, so which means it's external to this sort of range over here. So we swept this external range liquidity. We've, we ideally came into we didn't actually just we didn't actually sweep this engine swing low here. We ideally created a new low within price, but we've traded higher. So this low wasn't really a strong low to me. Hence why I wanted to see this low run out into the lower portion of the week. And that's why on the dollar index I had this low marked out, as in I wanted to see price trade below this low and ideally this low, which we did get just below it. Yeah. Uh, but the two main targets from an intraweek perspective was previous London low and obviously this low over here. This is why I didn't really believe in this being a strong low because it didn't actually take out this low here if we took out this low this would have been our pacific interbank dealer range interbank dealer range high interbank dealer range low and then we can look for pacific shorts over here um but yeah i wanted to see a pacific rate of either this second standard deviation being met or this high being run out and i stated that my entry wouldn't come before uh pmi had been released <laughs> Um, so that was a big thing I wanted people to focus on, that I wasn't really rushing into the position. I was just mo mostly focusing on this specific narrative over here, just this framework. Um, and again, this was a framework from an intraday basis, but the overall low of the week, which I call to the absolute T, I wanted to see that come to fruition from a weekly bias perspective. So yeah, that's another way I look at specific biases or how you can read my specific biases. When I give targets, I normally give it from a weekly perspective not just from an intraday perspective. So nevertheless, we had that cumulative range, manipulation higher, distribution from that Pacific fair over the gap, which is beautiful to see. And it was beautiful to see because this is a previous balanced price range over here. We had a bullish fair over the gap on the 30 minute time frame, And then we simultaneously had that bearish fair over the gap over here, which creates a balanced price range. Price rate into the absolute T and then we sold off. We formed this breaker here, last time candle price got moved, price returned into it. And this is what I gave my buy this is where I sort of gave my uh, narrative for the next day. So again, we can see this first bias playing out, the bar bearish narrative. Um, and then I gave the accurate bias. So I basically called the high of the dollar index. Now, why did I call the high at this specific price point over here? I wanted to see price rate into a premium of this specific inefficient pricing over here. So if we're looking at this fair value gap here, I'm just going to extend that there. But I'm looking at this high of the wick and this low of the bearish candle wick. 
I'm looking for price to trade into a premium of this inefficient pricing as well as trade into a premium of this specific break over here. Now, those of you who don't understand what a premium discount means from a uh, PDRA, it simply means above the 50% level. So I waited for price to trade above that 50% level and this basically gave me an indication that we were going to trade lower. We traded lower, traded through this bullish PDRA, which is that uh, previous fair value gap. And if you actually look at the telegram, I give in depth on exactly why I was stating uh, bearish bias, etc. from the get-go. But if I just zoom out, zoom in, sorry, mm -hmm. this specific narrative, you can see I want to see higher pricing and lower and the target still remain the same as well as a bias. And that's what we saw to the absolute T. Last swap candles prior to a down move, bearish order block. And then we saw lower pricing that liquidated the first low and then traded into the second low to the absolute T. And you can see this level respected. Again, going into the next day, Asian range form, trend line phantom. And you can see price didn't actually trade much lower than this specific low here. And I was telling you why I wanted to see this low run out. It's because price failed to run through this low, which made it a um, weak low. And that was a valid target for myself. And also, I was looking at this from a market maker sell model perspective. Original consolidation in here, smart money reversal. And then ultimately, this was our low risk sell. Because we don't really have a... Maybe on the five minute time frame, we must have an opportunity. So, ideally, you can consider this your low risk sell in order this price action here, redistribution, redistribution. And then we have sort of a smaller market maker sell model on the five minute time frame. Original consolidation here, smart money reversal, low risk sell, and then obviously completion of that market maker sell model. But yeah, that was your, uh, sorry, dollar index. Dollar index price action this week, beautiful call. Um, and then over here, I wanted to see higher pricing and the lower to simply sweep this trend line phantom. But the way price played out was a bit manipulative in the sense that we had this trend line phantom. We had a sweep of that trend line phantom. Last down candle priority up move coupled with this order block over here. Excuse me. And then we saw higher pricing and then we saw that distribution lower. And then Friday, I wasn't trading because I was a Pacific dollar news event. I didn't really like. And we just consolidated throughout that whole day. Um, and yeah, if I ever have a week like this where I call civic biases left, right, center, I normally try to take Friday off because us as traders, um, you want to try and get in less position than more. And the reason I say that is because at the end of the day, capital preservation keeps you in the game. Partials keep you in the game, capital preservation, risk sentiment. So in this industry, less is more. The less trades you can take, but the high probable ones that have a high probable end to them, will pay you more than the more frequent trades you take, but they don't really have uh, that high of a chance of giving you that RR or having that many confidences to them, et cetera. People think because they have a, a let's just say a funded account, et cetera, and they have X amount of capital to their name, they want to just press the button like an, a machine gun. It don't really work like that. You need to wait for the highest probable setting to be presented um, and have the emotional discipline to sit through the wins losses and then at the end of the uh, trading week trading month and ultimately trading quarter and year hopefully come out with a profitable return so yeah with that being said whenever whenever i have a a good trading week like this and i caught a favorable move and i'm up a substantial rr i just call it a week and um yeah there's no need to really trade friday why is there no no need to trade friday because again if you're looking for positions within the new york session You've already got about three hours and then a couple of hours later, market closes. So are you trading to hold the position into the next week or are you trading to ideally get out of that specific position with a substantial RR? The likelihood of you getting more than three R, including partials on a Friday New York session um, is pretty low. But if you're able to get something in the London session, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's how I look at Friday's price action on any given week. Looking at Eurodollar now, Eurodollar was clean this week. Um, I caught a lot, a lot of, um, caught a lot of pips on this. But I, don't, I don't really like to utilize or acknowledge my success in trading through pips rather than percentages, because percentages actually pays, and that's the number that matters. But nevertheless, reflecting back onto the bias, why was I actually expecting a bullish bias on your dollar? So again, looking at the dollar index and how I framed the Tuesday high of the week, I wanted to see dollar frame that Tuesday low of the week because again, whatever happens on your dollar 
the opposite is on the dollar index. We saw the Pacific low of the week come to fruition. Now, why did I sort of see this as the low of the week? We swept this previous day's low, but if you actually look at previous day's low a bit more in depth, we had these relative equal lows on the 15 minute time frame. And if I flick onto the one hour time frame now, we're sweeping sell side liquidity while mitigating with a high time frame order block. And that high time frame order block is not the one hour time frame, it's the four hour time frame. Last three down candles prior to that aggressive move higher swept this engine of swing right here so i knew this candle held weight to it and you can also see from an institutional um order flow perspective sweep last down candle prior to the out move mitigation last i arguably last down candle prior to the out move mitigation last down candle prior to the out move mitigation and if you actually look at these lows in here there were smt with gbp usd so if i like, actually look at gbp US, usd lows here what's the smt in here, might be in dollar index. You see DXY, but there was a strong low I was looking at within this specific region here. So, yeah, it was with uh, DXY, my bad. So you can see dollar index compared to euro USD. DXY made that high high within price, and uh, euro dollar failed to make that lower low, which shows that cracking correlation between the two assets um, and that SMT divergence coming into play. But yeah, that was another narrative supporting that bullish bias. So straight away from Monday, I knew we were going to see the low of the week either on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. I just needed that low of the week. To sort of show its hand, sort of like the elephant footprint in the sand. And it's exactly what commenced. Sell side liquidity liquidated, higher pricing, broke the structural high here, shows that significant break in market structure. Now, as soon as we see a structural high being uh, broken, what are we expecting next? Are we going to jump in from a premium standpoint and try and long it? Or are we going to wait for price to trade into a discount? Obviously, you're going to wait for price to trade into a discount. Um, and the price action was beautiful on euro dollar because of the fact not only did price trade into a discount, we also liquidated this trend line phantom over here. So again, all of this sell side liquidity liquidated. And now I just basically had to refine my specific area of interest. And I was thinking, okay, from a higher time frame narrative, because again, I'm looking at this from a one shot, one kill perspective, what PDRAs do we have? Looking at this on the four hour time frame now. Yeah, it was this previous fair value gap I was looking at. So again, you can see price respected this, 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 this. Last down candle price here, move, which signifies a specific bullish order block. But since we traded into that extremity of that bullish order block, I couldn't really trust it. Because as soon as we get below that mean threshold, I'm questioning myself, will this bullish order block hold from a full hour perspective? But notice we had a candle closure above that mean threshold. Again, I'm using the bodies to determine the mean threshold. We had a candle closure above that mean threshold, which shows significance um, this day had in regards to a bullish bias. But I was so set on Tuesday framing that low of the week, I wanted to see higher pricing to liquidate this low resistance liquidity run. So again, if I look at the PDRAs, I was looking at this previous fair of the gap over here, extend that out in time. Um, yeah, if I just show you the annotation now that I was looking at. And this was sent publicly in the um, Telegram and also gave a specific refinement entry that people could have got involved in. And I'll go through that specific refinement entry in just a second. Balance price range over here. Last down candle price here move, which suggests that 15 minute bullish order block. And as soon as price trade into this region here, I said refine in the specific area of interest. And then target higher pricing, which was this inefficient pricing here. I was targeting this internal range liquidity, this inefficient pricing. Um, didn't really want to see price trade above these specific highs here, but if it did, it did. I specific I held about 25% of my position. So we could see sort of higher pricing into this region here, but 75% 75, 75 of my position was taken off as soon as price traded above this internal range liquidity and into this specific fair value gap here. Um, and the entry refinement I used was pretty simple in the sense that I wanted to see a breaking market structure during New York. Price trading below, um, sorry, not below, price trading back into the, this specific um, inefficient pricing, which is the fair value gap. And also this last down candle prior to your move, turned it into that beautifully, and then price just flew higher. Took out that engine of swing high here, and then I closed majority of my position in here. 
and then obviously price traded below back into this lost on candle price here. Move algorithmic theorem playing out beautifully again. This could have been a London close setup to be participant in, and then we saw higher pricing to liquidate that daily high, uh, which was seen going into Asia the next day. And um, and then yeah, going into the next day, it was um, this was the bias I had in regards to price trading into this specific rejection block. So this was my area of interest. I think I deleted the specific rejection block, but this is my uh, area of interest. And this is not me just draw drawing a line on. This is me actually. Um, calling price at that specific rejection block. Again, you can see everything publicly called on Telegram. There is no hindsight when it comes to my trading. I don't really believe in hindsight. Um, and this is why I fell in love with ICT's principles. Is because if you look at any of ICT's principles or annotations or chart work, regardless of what he does, if he talks about indices, if he talks about currencies, if he talks about commodities, he always talks about the market from a before standpoint, it always calls it live in trading view. He always talks about his bias before price commence. Anyone could create a strategy after his commence, but very few can do it before. And so I respect the man so much um, and follow his principles. But nevertheless, rejection block over here. And it was a 15 minute rejection block. I was looking at it was 30 minutes. Yeah, 15 minute rejection block. And we saw London's low rated. So again, when I saw this. Um, this was basically taken into my head here. Relative equal highs on um, or during the Asian session. Total soup scenario. Total soup scenario once more. Sold off. <clears throat> we tested Asia's low here. London low liquidated. And I thought, okay, if price is going to do anything, we're going to at least retest um, London's low over here. Price rated into that rejection block. So higher, sorry, uh, Asia low. Um, we're going to at least retest Asia's low. London low liquidated. We're traded back into that rejection block, saw higher pricing back into that Asia low, and this is why I took about 30% of my position, and then the rest got stopped, break even. Uh, again, it is risky trading news from the get-go because of that whiplash price action, etc. but this re rejection block just looked too clean, and especially from this bullish narrative over here, rebalance of this inefficient pricing, etc. relative equal highs here, um, but I sort of did see this bearish narrative coming, but from a bullish standpoint, especially in regards to news, uh, my long position looks something like this. So I had a long limit there, and I believe my stop was it was just below this specific fairway gap here. Just below that 15 minute fairway gap. So I had about 10 pip stop, and I took partials at this specific low here. So I took 30% 30, 30 of my position at a 1 to 3, which is quite a nice. Um, RR, again, just something off the table. And you just got to understand the duration that I took. So it took, you know, less than 30 minutes to take uh, profits from less than 30, 40 minutes. As soon as I took uh, profits from that, I'm not really interested in this specific move over here because I've already made my money. I've already made my percentage. I've already made my pips for that specific session. And then the rest got stopped at break even, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, that was that. And then obviously Friday, I didn't really trade because I was just not favoring price action going into the remainder of the week. And obviously we had that specific um, high impact dollar news, which I didn't really want to be involved in. Um, another currency pair that moved quite favorable in regards to last week's calls was pound dollar. Pound dollar was actually quite a nice mover. I actually managed to capitalize on favorable opportunities on this. The first being this beautiful AMD formation. And just before I talk about that AMD formation, I want to talk about this specific four hour fervity gap. Now, when you're looking at high time frame PDRAs, from what I've witnessed in regards to me, you know, previously seeing price react to high time frame PDRAs and how they compare to intraday PDRAs, they don't respect, you know, this PDRA from the get go in the sense that when you see smaller time frame PDRAs, they normally wick into a certain area of interest and then they move in your favored bias. Whilst with higher time frame PDRAs, price likes to slowly get into those areas of interest and accumulate orders within those higher time frame PDRAs. As soon as orders have been accumulated, we normally see those rapid um we normally see those rapid price action moves to specific liquidity pools. 
uh, previous day's highs, weekly highs, monthly highs, etc. Depending on your bi uh, bias, it could be a, a bearish narrative or bullish narrative. But what I'm trying to emphasize is I had people say price to close below this four hour fairly gap. Why would you still, you know, why would you still utilize um, a bearish narrative in, on um, pound dollar? Which arguably we did have a candle closure below that fairly gap on a 15 minute perspective. But if I actually zoom out on a four hour perspective, again, it's the four hour area of interest that I'm monitoring. remove these annotations again you can see there wasn't really a candle closure within that fairly gap there which suggests that this fairly gap should hold because the candle closure in regards to this fairly gap here was inside this inefficient pricing over here so that's one way to determine a specific um pdra from a higher time frame and if we're going to ultimately hold that another way i like to utilize it if we're talking about from a um, british order block perspective is just understanding the opening of the bullish order block um, and arguably the low or the mean threshold. You ideally don't want to see price trade between the low or the mean threshold if we're looking at it from a bullish order block perspective. That's another way I like to utilize it. So we just trade into that mean threshold, didn't actually get into the low, which still validates this specific last down candle prior to that move, uh, which I believe it was a yeah, one hour specific order block last down candle prior to that move. Um, but yeah, nevertheless, we closed below that um, four hour fairly gap on a 15 minute time frame. But we have to understand why price closed below that specific four hour um, fairly gap over here. And it was because of this AMD schematic accumulation, manipulation, and then we saw distribution higher. That ideally broke this engine swing high here, which suggests a breaking market structure now that liquidity had been liquidated. Okay, now excuse me as soon as price are broken that market structure we formed these relative equal highs and price had yet to trade into this inefficient pricing and this was my target for the week i didn't really want i didn't really want to see um or wasn't really focused on anything else i was just focused on these relative equal highs being liquidated because again this is all in a cumulative range um, and i stated as soon as when price trades into that inefficient pricing i'm possibly going to close all of my position um and the reason i said that was because Again, we did have this original consolidation here, which I'll, which I which I was looking at from an intraweek perspective. I did want to see this original consolidation being met. But one thing I didn't like was this balance price range being respected with this wick over here. And we also had this last up candle price here down, which suggests a bearish order block. So if we're looking at this from a premium and discount standpoint, internal range liquidity over here, liquidation, aggressive move lower. So if, if I thought of this from a continuation standpoint, yes, we have framed the low of the week on Tuesday trading back into a discount but this could just be a valid target over here a nice one to four trade and you know you call it a week there and that's basically what i did i took a nice one to four trade and um closed somewhere within this fair value gap here and then ultimately price traded back into this fair value gap didn't really see that i wasn't really interested in it because we traded into london close and then later on during that day we traded the full amount to close the original consolidation was i worried about price closing into that original consolidation no because I'd already made my money on euro dollar, I'd made my money on pound dollar, and that was it, I was happy for the day. I'm not in it to capitalize on the close of price. My objective is to ideally monitor exactly where price is gonna frame the low of the day, and how I can exit successfully at a specific um, reversal point. What do I mean by reversal point? A specific uh, PDRA, that could be a threat or could be traffic towards my bias. Um, a specific liquidity pool where price will most likely reverse from ideally an engine to high relative equal highs previous day high etc those are all you know ticking in my brain so that was the narrative on pound dollar and quite a successful trade and again here's the annotation before and i actually broke this down gave a valid entry in regards to getting involved this bullish order block over here you can see that bullish order block respected previous so to get respected oh sorry no um Yeah, was this example which all about respected um and then we saw higher pricing but yeah i'm just going to get onto that example in, in just a second it was this example i was talking about the cumulative sorry just lost my trade of thought there just talking about um possible exits etc 
But yeah, as I was saying, a cumulative range over here, manipulation. Um, and ideally, if we're looking at this from a structural point of view, we shouldn't really see this low taken out. Why? Because if you're looking at this from a structural point of view, short term low, long term low. Ideally, this formed our next short term low. We had a rate of that short term low breaking market structure. And that gave me the confluence to go long on pound dollar. And we were disrespecting these bullish PDA rates. So I gave that long opportunity there. Straight from the get go, we saw higher pricing. And literally, literally within an hour, could have been done within this specific session so that's what i want you to understand i want you to understand the duration you're in these trades as well because when i send out specific analysis when i send out specific biases i don't expect you to execute from the get-go like he's just sent out you know long on pound dollar boom i'm gonna enter a trade what's the point you're entering blind you're just entering because price is reacting off let's just say a budget order book you need to see the cumulative range form you need to see how price is reacting on the lower time frames because again a rule that changed my whole trading perspective is price is fractal whatever goes on the monthly time frame will go on on the one minute time frame you just have to analyze it you have to read it and understand okay these pdras are being respected look at the way the candle closure is respecting this previous fervity gap here and this bullish order block simultaneously you know having a candle closure above that fervity gap here and look at the wicks on this bullish order block i mean this, this is all algorithmically ran and this is just proof on how you know detailed the explanation no, sorry, not detailed, how advanced this specific algorithm is and straight after the cumulative orders have been um, sort of programmed, etc. We see this impulsive rally higher. This is the move we want to be in. We don't really want to be involved in this retracement and then just slow movement higher. Ideally, you could have held to the specific momentum over here. That could be an option as well. But you'd be done for the day within these three candles here. Then trying to hold for all of this duration here which is several hours going into asia etc and then the next day commenced and i was favoring this specific setup i haven't actually got the previous annotation over here but you can go into the public telegram actually i have my bad again this was called publicly in the telegram the pacific area of interest before the news event commenced again this was long off the news event um and i was looking at this favorite gap here last on candle prior to the up move which frames our Pacific bullish order block, um, and I'm using this bullish order block because we rebalanced with this specific inefficient pricing over here, and we had support of these last three down candles prior to up move, which frames a uh, bullish narrative for institutional order flow. Um, so again, we saw higher pricing liquidate that engine and swing high here, and again we've also liquidated that buy side liquidity via this market maker bar model. Asian range form, total sweep of the Asian range, lower pricing, relative equal highs, liquidated London's low liquidity. So again, we had one drive. So uh, these relative equal lows, one drive, second drive, third drive to the low. And I knew during this third drive, price is going to mitigate this last time. Candle price got moving. and I entered long in around this area here. And I believe I got out just over um, about one. Entered long around here. Yeah, stop was a bit big on this. It's about two point. So ideally, the target was up here. I got out around here. So I got out 20% of my position, 1.8. And the reason I did that was because we had this total soup scenario on these relative equal highs here. If I actually just flick onto the three minute time frame, you can see price is mitigating with something in around this region here. So we had this relative equal highs here. Total soup scenario, we are mitigated with specific area of interest here. And the reason I said we mitigated with uh, something in around this region over here is because we had a rate of these relative equal highs and ultimately, going into the later portion of the day, we had that breaking market structure return to this fairly gap and create that new structural low. This would basically made me exit my position and we ideally liquidate these relative equal lows. So I thought no point holding it for the remainder of the day. So I exited about 1.5 R on this 1.5 to 1.8. I can't believe, I can't remember the exact percentage. I exited was. 20% of my position off there. But nevertheless, it was the duration of this. You know, price rapidly expanded from this level all the way near enough to New York's high. And that was good enough level for me to exit on a profitable standpoint. Next bias or public call was USD CAD. USD CAD was a bit of a weird one. And the reason USD CAD was a bit of a weird one because of how the algorithm was structuring price 
and the volume that was condensed in order to see such an immense movement higher or lower. Um, so yeah, how I was basically looking at USD CAD previously was like this. Again, we had these relative equal highs here, total sub scenario, lower price and short term high, long term high. Ideally, wanted this to be my long term high. This was give the narrative was given before um, CAD high impact CAD news uh, commenced, and I actually gave a US oil bias, which played out quite nicely simultaneously, which I'll go through in just a second. But yeah, I want to see lower pricing because I thought this was the um, inter intermediate term high, but unfortunately it wasn't. We just had a little bit of higher pricing to liquid. This engine this one guy here. Then we formed that intermediate term high, and then we ultimately sold off. So again, the intermediate term high formed over here, and I really wanted it to form somewhere in around here, which was no problem because again I was looking to trade after the news event commenced. Anyways, um, higher pricing liquidate this engine this one guy here. Beautiful liquidation of that high, beautiful liquidation of these relatively equal highs here. I did you trade it into this rejection block and then we saw lower pricing. And if we look at this on a three minute time frame, you can see a nice entry pattern over here from a break breakup perspective. Lost three down candles, priority out move, mitigation of that breaker, and then ideally this could have been a nice risk to reward to possibly go short to target these relative equal lows here, um, which we got a nice clean sweep of during the Asia session. Would I have sort of been a participant within this trade here? No, because of the consolidative consolidation range over here and the expansion we had during that Pacific um, high impact CAD news event. Um, so yeah, once that commenced, that was basically that day. Um, and then we saw the Asia session form relative equal highs during Asia, total soup, total soup of um, these relative equal lows. And we also had, which is quite an interesting day, a raid of the previous day's low and previous day's high. Um, and nine times out of 10, whenever price raids the previous day's high or previous day's low, sorry, when it raids previous day's high and previous day's low simultaneously, we tend to have a reversal day. Um, so yeah, I should have seen this one coming. We had SMT with dollar index the next day, and so just a beautiful short textbook short rebalance with this. Uh, I believe it's a five minute Fibonacci gap in here. See so yeah, a five minute Fibonacci gap going into this is London lunch though, so not really favorable. New York session, lost two down candles. Sorry, lost two up candles. Prior to the down move, bearish order block, total soup. Nice short over there. Um, didn't even get an IO fed to get short, but the targets on this, the draw on liquidity was clean. Again, I was targeting a one hour slash four hour um, relative equal lows. And then basically these relative equal lows here um, that I was targeting. But yeah, the reason USD CAD was quite choppy and um, sort of hard to get a read on is because if you look at the previous day over here, price never liquidated the previous day's high or previous day's low, hence why I marked out these specific areas of interest because they're still valid and the next day we liquidated both the previous is low and previous is high so it was a bit of a shambles in regards to actually getting a read on price but nevertheless the narrative the bias given um, on those specific days were quite accurate and obviously with this smt playing out just textbook uh, for possible shorts and i believe i did call it short off this break over here last down candle priority up move which suggests a strong breaker and then obviously price ready into that breaker. Loss up handle for to down move. That would have been a nice London close setup uh, to get involved in. And then obviously Friday we weren't involved in any Pacific trades. Um, I believe we took one Euro dollar trade, but that was probably giving us like a, a one to fifteen R. In that case, it's worth it because you have such a small stop and so have such a high risk to reward. But there was no significant breaking market structure from an area of interest, so we didn't actually execute any uh, buttons or anything like that but yeah friday's price section just choppy and um not the one last but not least looking at us oil now us oil i mean i called a beautiful phenomenal bias us oil is probably one of the hardest markets to read the reason that is is because there's a lot of manipulative uh instruments that go into us oil for example it's um 
the opposite bias to USD CAD. Um, so yeah, to get a read on US oil from a consistent basis on a day to day uh, trading environment, you know, that's a, it's a flex in itself. But that's why I like US oil because sometimes it can be challenging. For example, this day over here, it was challenging because I've got the USD CAD narrative right, but the US oil right, uh, the US oil bias um, was off. And again, this is what the video videos are about. I have to ensure my biases are 10 out of 10 because when I go public with it, I need to speak about my bias confidently, exactly what I was looking at. And um, yeah, ideally, I want to come on this video with the correct narrative. I don't want to come on this video with the wrong narrative or me giving you the opposite bias that commenced for that specific day, um, which it did in this bias here, which, you know, I hold my hands up higher because I was illustrating exactly what I saw commence on price on that specific day. Uh, relative equal lows here. Asia low liquidated, last two down candles price to help move, which frames that bullish order block breaking market structure. I just thought this was going to be, um, you know, a nice bullish setup. Also going on to the 15 minute time frame here. This one, so it's 30 minutes, see that minute. So yeah, it was in this, this price section here. I noticed this price disrespected this bearish uh, PDRA here, this old uh, uh, further gap here, extend that out in time, which I'll just extend it out in time now. I was basically looking for this price section or this area of interest in here to be respected and then for us to see higher pricing to then liquidate this engine and guy here. So that's what I was expecting going into the three minute time frame now. Again, the three minute, I like to refine my specific areas of interest on the three minute time frame. And I'll just show you what I was looking at in here. Again, price was just chopping, but there was no significant breaking mark structure. Notice with this push order block, we had that breaking mark structure, etc. etc. There was no breaking mark structure. These highs remain in position. High remained in position over here. High remained in position over here. High remained in position ideally over here. And when I wait for a breaking mark structure, I want to see a clean candle closure. Now, not only did we have no breaking mark structure, this, this PDRA was being disrespected. We respected in this instance, but there was no breaking mark structure. Candle closure below this PDRA. And again, I said the difference between high time frame PDRAs and lower time frame PDRAs um, somewhere in the middle of this video here. But the difference is high time frame PDRAs, you can wait for the accumulative range. Lower PDRAs, you want to see price trade in that specific area of interest and trade aggressively in your favorite bias from the get go, like instantly, boom. The reason being is because the algorithm doesn't like to be in these lower time frame PDRAs long. As soon as this lower time frame PDRA, let's just say this is a, um, a four hour fairly gap in here. You see this massive price range over here. And again, you refined that to the one minute time frame or one minute or five minute time frame, just in lower time frame PDRAs. Um, you can see the price trading into that. And you're looking for refinements in here. Ideally, you want to see price react in this one minute or five minute fairly gap aggressively. The Aggressive price action don't come from the four hour fervor gap. We don't trade into the four hour fervor gap and you know aggressively take off. That's the catalyst towards higher pricing. But the real explosive momentum comes from these lower time frame PDRAs within the higher time frame PDRAs. Um, so that's what I was basically waiting for. I was waiting for price to give me the breaking market structure and ideally give me the impulsive move higher where I can then look for structural. Um, Structural moves in the sense I want to see long term low form, intermediate term low, and obviously take my positions from there. But price never actually formed any of that. You know, we traded lower, and then I wasn't really looking at this for the remainder of that day. And the next day, I caught a beautiful, beautiful trade on US oil. And again, you can see it all publicly on the Telegram. There's no hindsight in regards to these specific biases. I stated this specific narrative on US oil. Asia high over here. We had liquidation of that Asia low um, and the previous day's low. So again, cumulative orders specifically done during the London session saw higher pricing. Um, and then we had this accumulative range over here. And I stated uh, since price is sort of accumulating over here, I want to see refinement and then I'll see higher pricing into this break over here. This is the main target for myself. And as soon as that breaker was met, I said, close your full position. And the full position was closed. And then we actually saw a reversal, which I'm going to cover 
in just a second. But the overall target was this previous day's high. Um, and for price to trade into this interbank unit range high as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to sorry minimize this specific screenshot over here. And if we actually look at what price had given us textbook situation, uh, previous day's low ran out during New York as well. So we had that manipulative move again. When you have a, a bias, you're, you stick to it regardless of what price action shows. Um, and if we actually look at this, what is it here? Trendline Phantom, clean Trendline Phantom. Price trading back to that previously low breaking market structure. What do you have in here? Internal range liquidity. As soon as that internal range liquidity liquidated, um, Oh, sorry, no, it wasn't this um, internal range liquidity I was looking for longs on. I didn't actually execute longs on this. Um, that's why my mind was a bit um, haywire or just a bit foggy in on this specific bias here. There's actually this move I wanted to be a participant in. It was on the one minute time frame. So yeah, it was this I was looking at. And I'm just writing the price action here. So as soon as we traded back below that previous is low over here, we had this breaker here, lost up candle price to a down move. Now I wouldn't really enter just off that engine swing low here, liquidation. Price retested this breakout and we've respected this bullish um fervity gap here. And as soon as price respected that bullish fervity gap, I'd ideally want to wait for a uh, breaking mark structure at some point, uh, but we didn't actually get that with this specific candle here. So I wouldn't have looked for any, wouldn't have looked for any long entries in around this region here. What I'll be doing those, I'll be mapping out these previous further gaps here. Ideally, I want them to hold as specific support. Um, so that's what I'd be doing as price trades higher and higher and higher. There isn't really a significant uh, further gap in this region here. We have one in this region. Map that as well. And this is all on the one minute time frame. So this is the time frame I'll be refining. Um, and as soon as we broke above that specific relative equal highs, I'll be waiting for the return to order block and return to one of these uh, previous favorite gaps. Last down candle, price had an explosive move up, and this would would have been my long entry over here. Extend that out in time. Also trading into that um, favorite gap. That previous favorite gap here. There's two ways you're going to enter this. Again, the respect of this last time candle prior to your move, which frames that bullish order block, and then saw higher pricing. Or you could have entered as soon as you see, saw a candle closure, respect this previous favorite gap over here, and your long entry would have been right here, and that would have been a snipe entry and a half, no drawdown, and then you would have targeted um, that specific breaker as your specific um, target on this. So it would look something like this. If you was to enter on a candle closure perspective, and stop would have had to be in either at the um, low of that order block or the mean threshold of that specific favorite gap there, and the target being the specific breaker. So you can even put it over there um, or just below it, something like that. So you're looking at a 4.5R on US oil from an intraday perspective, but this is how I would have been looking at price. And again, obviously, there's additional entries here relative equal lows, price trades back into a premium. Uh, sorry, discount during London close, last down candle, priority out move, last two down candles, priority out move, and this is also a breaker. If I actually look at this on the five minute time frame, the reason I'm actually breaking down price um, like this is because I actually didn't take this trade. I was kicking myself about it because it was so, it was so clean. Last two up candles, priority out down move, which frames that bullish breaker. Um, and again, there's multiple, multiple confluences now within this specific area of interest for price to go higher and the breaker target had not been met. Um, so yeah, beautiful target. And as soon as we reached that breakout, I said, take your um, full profits um, and close your position. And then after that price just dumped lower and regardless of where you took a position in this specific um, region of price, you would have got stopped at break even. And there's nothing worse than being a, in a profitable position where you could have took significant partials and getting stopped at break even. Because your analysis was spot on, your bias was spot on, your execution, you dealt with your emotions in holding that trade, and then price come and dumps you, stops you at break even, says you can't, you know, take any pips out for the day, any money, any percentage, 
and then you're stuck with Asia and the rest of the consolidation for the day and you have to wait for the next day to do the exact same thing. So a word of advice, always take partials no matter how small it may seem. Because partials actually keeps you in the game. And the next day we had a raid of Asia's low, Asia high first, total soup, Asia low, um, and then ultimately saw price skyrocket during um, the New York session. And I wasn't actually a participant within the specific session here, but we just missed our Pacific target. We actually hit our Pacific target from a bullish narrative perspective on Friday. So yeah, that was quite nice to see. And afterwards, US oil just dumped. So you can see how well and how accurate these specific targets are. They're no joke. And when I give out these specific targets, I mean them and um, and often give you specific levels within the description of me giving out the chart annotation take note of those specific um, annotations and the description so for future references you know exactly where to look for in regards to continuation setup reversals and just to get out the position completely on a profitable standpoint with that being said i'm going to wrap up the video about 50 minutes this um breakdown if you did watch the whole video i appreciate you and um yeah i hope you found this video insightful hope you gained some knowledge out of it if you did drop a thumbs up subscribe to the channel comment something uh, positive and um yeah let's smash the next week i can't wait for the next week now uh, sunday i will have a market outlook either sunday or monday depending on you know how prices and my schedule etc i don't trade on mondays that's another thing i want to illustrate as well mondays is a no trading day for me it's just basically like the Judas swing of the week kind of thing. Um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday is my day trading days. Um, so, yeah, with that being said, let's, you know, kill next week. Any success stories you have, forward them to me. Um, and I'm obviously going to share it with the rest of the group, etc. All privacy matters will be covered in the sense that your name will be covered, etc. Um, so I have respect for my clients like that. And, um, yeah, this is this is only going to grow bigger and better. And it's also challenging for me because I have about 3,000 people within that public telegram. I look to grow it every single day. So if you can share this channel to friends and family or a person that may benefit as well, uh, that would be very much appreciated on my end. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, I'm going to call it a video there and I'll speak to you in the market outlook. Good night all and good trading.